light on the importance of today's session. Thank you, Mrs. Srimati. A very good morning to the resource person, Professor M. Lakshmi Pati Rao, retired professor in physics from Usmania University. And he has held several administrative, important administrative positions as a professor in physics at Usmania University. Currently, he is director, Methodist Engineering College. Um, all the heads of the departments, faculty members, and uh, the delegates who have joined uh, this FDP for today's session online. Uh, very good morning to everyone present here. Uh, I would like to extend uh, my warm thanks to Professor Lakshmi Pati Rao for having accepted our invitation to be the resource person to enlighten on a very, very hot topic uh, that is outcome based education. And uh, this is something uh, all higher education uh, faculty and the staff are talking about. Um, this was not heard of uh, before 2017. After uh, NAC has introduced this outcome based education, uh, there is a lot of discussion about it and uh, we were we it was very difficult for us to understand what exactly it was and how uh, things had to uh, be taken into. So uh, in 2018, we submitted our SSR to NAC. We were due to submit our SSR. But incidentally, what happened was uh, we were uh, transition autonomous college and therefore NAC said you can reapply for uh, NAC accreditation in 2020 after you complete six years of your autonomy. And therefore, we started working uh, for uh, the uh, submission of SSR and that is where a uh, team of uh, people in IQAC have researched on uh, this outcome based education and we understood that uh, what we have done uh, till then uh, was not good enough uh, to be included in our SSR and therefore we wanted to uh, implement exactly what uh, most of the research papers were conveying to us. Uh, but um, that doing the task is a very tedious one. A small group of people cannot do. Each and every one in the institution needs to work on it, understand, and then that needs to be implemented. So first, uh, we called the principal. We have uh, uh, conveyed to the principal what it involves. Actually, principal was a little hesitant uh, because um, he felt that we were uh, due to submit our SSR in a couple of months or so, and this is such a big task. How will we do about? Then I just gave him one confidence. Uh, if not now, at, at a later time, we have to do it. So why not try it right now? And uh, I also gave him a promise that uh, I will get it done with a team of people. Uh, the people will be from all departments. Then our next task was to convince the HODs. So we had a meeting with all the heads of the departments and we have given a briefing. They were also a little you know, jittery because uh, there was a lot of work that had to be done for the preparation of SSR and SSR submission. This was one other huge work. So they were also a little hesitant, but I gave them the confidence that we can do it. So that is how we initiated this process. And um, Dr. Mahendra, who is faculty in MBA, uh, was given charge as the coordinator for taking up this task. So he took a lot of efforts in sensitizing among the faculty members of all the departments about what exactly it is and how do we go about um, you know, implementing OBE. But incidentally, uh, we received a very, very positive response from all the faculty members and we started working. As the head of the department at that time, I was briefing my department faculty about this. So one comment that I heard that I received was, Madam, had we known why we have to frame COs for our papers earlier, had we had this clarity before, we would have framed our COs much better. So this was the response that we got. 
So anything and everything that NAC is asking us to do, it has a purpose. We initially may find it very difficult to adopt to what NAC is asking us to do. But then when we start doing, we start realizing the purpose behind what NAC, NAC is asking us to do. So this is the experience that I had when we initially started. Now, sir, uh, all the faculty members know how to um, do the matrix, COPO map, mapping matrix. And all of them know how to calculate the OBE value for their subject. So soon after the announcement of results, within one week or 10 days or so, faculty members are doing the result analysis by calculating the OBE value of their own course. So this is the impact that uh, is created. Um, now, the purpose of having today's session is that is not all is OBE. OBE also includes the method of assessment. We are not, we are doing the assessment only based on the universe, I mean, uh, the final results of the semester end examination, but there are a lot more things. So what uh, IQAC thinks is that let us implement OBE in a full-fledged way and start implementing that with the effect from 23-24 for the students who are joining the first year so that by the time we face the next NAC, we will have a clear idea of what OBE is and we will definitely be able to enjoy the teaching and evaluation system that we are adopting to. Okay, so this is the purpose of having this and even our question papers also should be framed keeping this OB in our mind. So we have here Professor Lakshmi Pati Rao who will be enlightening us. We, myself uh, um, and Dr. Swachala and Dr. Mahindra, we have heard him in various platforms and uh, so we identified sir Sir has been uh, coming to our college as uh, a committee member for inspections from university. So we have a good association with Sir. Sir readily agreed. And Sir also has given some exercise uh, that is to be done. I'm sure that all the faculty members have gone through the document which is uh, shared from Sir's side. And uh, you have done the exercise. And the sir will be also taking uh, up some activities based on uh, the document, uh, the, inf the content that is there in the uh, document. Uh, I'm sure that we all are going to have an enriching uh, session today. And um, we will start the academic year with a clear understanding of what OBE is. So thank you, sir, once again for uh, being here to enlighten us. Um, I wish all the participants all the very best and have an enriching session today. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for briefing the awakening process of the importance of outcome based education and evaluation process. I take this opportunity to introduce today's resource person, Dr. M. Lakshmi Pati Rao, with academic qualification of MSc and a PhD in physics from Usmania University, Hyderabad. Dr. Lakshmi Pati Rao has joined University College of Science, OU, as an assistant professor in the year 1973 and superannuated in the year 2010 as a professor of physics. During his tenure of 37 years, he had held various academic and administrative positions as head, department of physics, chairperson, board of studies, controller of examinations, director academic audit cell, director internal quality assurance cell, OU. His notable contribution during his tenure as director, IQAC, OU, the Usmania University was reaccredited by NAC with grade A in the year 2008. Dr. M. Lakshmi Pati Rao has also served as an academic consultant with National Assessment and Accreditation Council Bengaluru till 2016. As an enthusiastic academician, apart from classroom lectures, he has also delivered live lectures on Doordarshan TV channel 
for MSc students of Dr. Ambedkar Open University, Hyderabad. Dr. M. Lakshmipati Rao has authored two books on solid state physics. Dr. Rao has 60 research publications in reputed international and na national journals and conferences. Dr. M. Lakshmipati Rao delivered live 40 video lectures on solid state physics for engineering students of Rajiv Gandhi University for Knowledge Technologies, Hyderabad. Dr. Rao had delivered 70 talks on various aspects of quality accreditation, including outcome based education as a keynote and inaugural addresses at national seminars sponsored by NAC Bengaluru. Dr. M. Lakshmipati Rao was associated with NAC peer team visits to various universities as coordinator for assessment and accreditation during his tenure at NAC. Now, may I request Dr. M. Lakshmipati Rao, Director of Methodist College of Engineering and Technology, to take over the session on an overview of outcome based education and assessment strategies of its effective implementation. Okay, doesn't matter. Audiences, offline audience. So this this will not be visible for them. Okay, I can reach them. My voice is big enough. <laughs> very good morning to one and all. I'm very happy to be with you this morning and give a talk or organize a session on outcome based education. Now, I started the journey in outcome based education in the year 2016. You may be wondering, I am a professor of physics. How come that I am giving a talk on OBE? So because we wanted to implement in the college where I am working, engineering college, I started understanding OBE in the year 2016 and started the best way of learning subject is through teaching. I always believe as a teacher. So I started delivering lectures to my faculty on OBE. That is how I acquired some knowledge and which I have been sharing on various platforms like academic staff college. Some of your colleagues have also participated in that and in various colleges, whoever asked me to deliver a talk on OBE, I readily agree and share my knowledge of OBE because this is very, very essential these days. Now you know the tendency of the students in the classroom. They don't want to listen to the conventional lectures. Talk and talk, <laughs> chalk and board methodology is no more acceptable to the students. And the marks we are giving, they have no value even for them. Because even the recruiters also they don't take these grades or marks that we are giving at the end of the program. So that is the reason why we have to understand the alternate methods of conventional teaching and conventional learning. That is where the outcome based education fits in. Can I have the first? First, let us see. Can I change this slide using this? Okay. Education is not the learning of facts, but training the mind to think. This is what the greatest scientists of all times has said. And all teachers must keep this in mind while teaching in the classroom. It is not the transfer of knowledge that is important, but you have to train the brains of the student. So this is the basic definition of outcome-based education. Outcome-based education 
it is an approach that focuses on graduate attributes or outcomes there are various outcomes during the course of the talk you will be knowing and of course most of you may know this already after completing an academic program this is the accepted definition of the outcome based education next slide please yes. it is not what we teach it is what the students learn is important in obe always the emphasis of the teacher in the classroom is to complete the syllabus in the time and report to the head of the department or the principal so we think our job is over by completing the syllabus and time but we never bothered whether students are learning what we are teaching in the classroom that is the emphasis in obe this you can see two friends are discussing i will read out maybe you may not be able to read it i taught stripe how to whistle stripe is the dog the other man says i did not hear him whistling then the first man says i said i taught him i did not say he learned it so this is the state of affairs that is happening in most of the classrooms we accept the fact as a teacher i also accept this yes. so these are the four pillars of obe i would like to highlight obe does not mean only the calculation of outcomes the course outcomes and the attainment of program outcomes that is not what is required in obe there are many many important things rather than just mere calculation of the outcomes so these are the four pillars these questions are asked under obe the first one curriculum design what do you want the student to learn what is that you want them to learn that is the first thing that is the curriculum you frame you frame the entire curriculum for a program so this is what you want the students to learn that is the first pillar the second one why do you want them to learn okay i am teaching physics or you are teaching commerce so why should they learn this particular subject or for this particular course this is the second aspect that means there are certain outcomes that is expected of from the students after completing the program so in order to achieve that this is what you have to do it so these are the outcomes this is the second pillar and third pillar is how can best help students to learn it this is the most important thing as far as the faculty is concerned the pedagogy as i told you the conventional methodology will not work in obe so you have to change your approach in the classroom this is called as the pedagogy so what is our aim we have set a particular curriculum based on what is required from the students after completing the program then how to achieve it and what to achieve we have defined through outcomes then how you help them in achieving the outcomes that is called pedagogy that is important in the classroom if you say that i have completed the syllabus no there are no takers for that you must tell whether your students have achieved what they have to achieve that is important in obe that is what we are measuring as attainments through the assessments that you have so that's why the assessments also in obe are totally different from the regular assessments that we have been following all these years so this is the role of a teacher comes in this pillar the pedagogy how you are helping the students to achieve what they have to achieve that is already specified through outcomes and the last one is how will you know what they have learned okay you are teaching it you have approach you have some pedagogical approaches so you want to know whether they have achieved or not that is done through the assessment and also attainments so these are the four jargon that go into the outcome based education why obe madam has already explained why we have to think in terms of obe when i was student or when i was teacher i never heard about obe i retired in 2010 but now you have to follow obe there is no other go so because it, not only that nac insists but even otherwise it is essential for our students to solve the unemployment problem we must make our students more employable or turn them into entrepreneurs 
they should start have their own startups for doing all these things what we have been doing all these years is not sufficient so that's why the approach of obe is very very important that to after nep 2020 you versus an autonomous college in a course of time you have to fall in line and think in terms of nep 2020 so nep 2020 it gives at most importance for the outcomes outcome based education maximum importance is given in nep 2020 that is one reason of course accreditation is equally important for any institution because the public perception changes with the accreditation process if you say this college is accredited with a grade from nac and also nirf if it is figuring in first 100 then the perception changes good students look towards such colleges so that is the reason that is another reason that we have to obey this or follow obe and also what the genesis for this started in the year 2014 actually this obe is introduced uh, our uh, we are india is a signatory for the washington accord washington accord is signed in the year 1989 some 20 countries have joined together and entered into an accord according to that if they implement obe in their countries for the higher education then their degrees will be recognized and people can exchange scientists or other graduates into these countries easily very easily that was that was the initiation 1989 and india took so much time and became a signatory in the year 2014 from then onwards we are talking about 2014 you also have mba program in your college so you also should get accredited under obe by nba national board of accreditation if you get accreditation under that you will have a different footing different image so that is the reason why this is another reason why you should bother about obe next and you may think okay always i am explaining this is useful to the students useful to the students but in what way that is beneficial to the faculty that is also important i should know you will have better understanding of what is to be taught in the classroom that is very very important improved course design because the outcomes are defined earlier while framing the syllabus only knowledge we used to give importance to the knowledge and research areas so depending upon the demands of the research you have to frame the curriculum and also the syllabi in various subjects now it is not the case because the outcomes under obe are defined for all courses what is required of the student accordingly we are framing the curriculum so that is first advantage improved course design and then clear instructional focus what is to be taught in the classroom you will you will be highly focused in this because not only the students the faculty also should understand what are these outcomes that are required what a student can do after attending my classes you have clear cut idea so that means your approach your pedagogy your teaching methodology will be highly focused under obe this is another advantage the third advantage is enhanced assessment practices earlier we were giving maximum importance to the to start with we have year wise examinations and now at least we have semester wise examination and in semester also after some time internal assessment was introduced then end semester examination and in the internal assessment also what we are doing it is a repetition of what we are doing in the end semester we are conducting two written examinations again and taking the average of that and considering the marks so the whole what we are doing all these days is only conducting the examinations written examinations and judging the students based on the marks they obtained in these assessment examinations whether it is internal assessment or end semester examination so that that focus will change now the assessment pedagogy has changed completely so you have to have a different assessment methodology all together in obe that is the advantage you have next continuous improvement you will see during the course of the lecture you can improve your methodology during the course of study there is a provision in the assessment because after assessment you will see whether students are able to achieve what i wanted them to achieve and if they are not able to do it always there is a scope 
for improvement and then enhanced communication and collaboration. Now here, Madam has already told you, you have formed a group to formulate the guidelines for OBE, how to implement it. So earlier when syllabus is allotted to individual teachers, there is no discussion among these teachers. Whatever syllabus is allotted to a particular teacher, you are confined to that. Now that is not the case. In the department, you will have what is called as assessment committee. So that committee will go into mm -hmm. the entire curriculum. So you are also exposed not only to the syllabus that you are teaching, what other teachers are doing, how the course outcomes are formulated in the other subjects. So you exchange what is a better method and that is how you have enhanced communication among the faculty and also collaboration. Unless you collaborate in the department, it is very difficult to arrive at these outcomes, whether it is COs or POs. The next one, alignment with, no, just one. Alignment with accreditation standards. So why we have started this your college? Because you are going for NAC. So we are getting aligned to the accreditation process. Accreditation is necessary. What we are doing, what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses as an institution, we must be able to assess. For that, this is the only way. As students are writing examinations, the colleges are writing examinations by submitting SSR. So what you are doing is correct or not? That is another advantage that you have as faculty. Next one, please. Benefits to students. Of course, there are a large number of benefits and clear expectations. So that means now the students know earlier you used to give questions, they used to write answers. But now they used to read on their own, prepare for the examinations. But now because the emphasis has changed, they know what is to be studied. Because the outcomes are there, they have to achieve that outcomes. So if I want to achieve that outcome, what is to be done by me? So that means the students, they will have clear expectations and also personalized learning also it promotes and we are promoting and OBE mostly higher order skills among the students. Earlier, we were not giving importance to the higher order skills and now we are giving importance to higher order skills in the OBE. Yes, next please. Next. And the alignment with industry needs. Because we are before framing the curriculum, we are expected to interact with the industry and incorporate in the curriculum what is needed by the industry. That is important. So because it is aligned with the industry needs, the students are better benefited. So they, it is easy for them to enter the industry once they complete this particular program because already you have taken care about their needs while formulating the curriculum. That is another advantage they have. And then assessment and feedback. Of course, anyhow, we'll see some more on this. Next, next slide, please. But there are some challenges and limitations in OBE. First and foremost is the aspect of interpretation. Everybody interprets OBE in its own way. There is no standard approach for OBE that is specified by any agency. And I can do in a different way, but only thing is you must be able to substantiate, explain why you are doing like this. So that is one confusion that persists even today regarding OBE. There is no unified approach for implementation of OBE. The next one, the framework lacks perspective set of instructional design. Nowhere you will be given instructions. You follow like this, you do like this, you do like this under OBE. It is for you to formulate the guidelines. So this is another limitation. Then with our amount of jargon present, we talk about so many terms, we get confused. And also it is not that easy to formulate the course outcomes and program outcomes in tune with the curriculum. It takes a lot of time. That is another limitation because, uh, and then in OBE works very well with vocational subjects like engineering, science, commerce, social sciences also to certain extent, but not art subjects. Because they, they, are, they are literature and philosophy that require more free flowing structure rather than the structure that we have in commerce, or science, or in other subjects. This is another limitation that OBE has. So you have to understand these limitations. Next slide, please. So OBE starts with, now let us, we're entering into OBE, and we'll see 
the terminology. First one is vision, mission statement. All of you know, I need not spend much time on this. Vision is nothing but what the institution want to achieve. And how to achieve his mission. What to achieve, how to achieve. The next, next slide, please. So this is your vision and mission. I have taken from your website. What you wanted to achieve and what are your plans, the mission. So this is vision, mission. Next. So we start with vision, mission. By any institution, you should have a vision or mission. So from that onwards, how to achieve that vision, mission, you have certain terminology that is followed. So the first one is program educational objectives. These are not outcomes, but they are objectives, PEOs. PEO is program educational objectives. We will see some more uh, information about this. Program outcomes, program specific outcomes, and course outcomes. So these are the three outcomes that we concentrate in OBE. And the first one being the program educational objective. Next slide, please. Program, all of you know what is a program? What is a program? A degree. For example, you have BSc, MPCS, that is one program. BSc, MECS, if you have, that is another program. So like that, you have so many programs in your college. I don't know how many you have. How many programs all put together? 21 undergraduate programs you have. So this is what a program is. Then program outcome is PEOs are PEOs are statements that very clearly tell about what kind of career or professional accomplishment that the program is preparing the students for. Why should anybody take a BSc program in Bhavan's College? That means you must tell out if you take up this course, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. So you are preparing them for achieving certain things. These are called as PEOs. When will they achieve that? After completing the graduation or a period of three or four years. They can achieve certain things. Those are called as program educational objectives. The next one, please. Because man, I don't want to spend much time on this. I'll quickly run through this. And then this program outcomes. What a student is expected of or what he is capable of doing at the end of the program. That means if it is a semester course at the end of the sixth semester, after writing the examinations, what he is capable of, those are called as POs. These are also called as graduate attributes or program outcomes. Not much difference between graduate attributes and program outcomes. Next one. Course objective and course outcomes. Uh, I would like somebody to answer what is the difference between course objective and course outcome? Can anybody tell? So, okay, objectives, course objectives are mainly meant for the teachers. What is expected of a teacher? What is the objective of this course? They are meant for the teachers. Course outcomes are what the students are capable of after doing that. Those are the course outcomes. That is the subtle difference between these two, course objectives and course outcomes. So that means at the end of the each course, they are undergoing so many courses. Course I mean, whether it is a theory course, a practical course, uh, either a project work or an internship, Whatever, if you have a course number for that, that is considered as a course. Theory, practicals, and also in project works, internship, everything, even assessments. And if you have some course name, whatever is having course number is there, that is called as a course. So at the end of this course, what is student is capable of? That is called as course outcome. So this is the process of OBE. We start with vision, mission, then POs. Outcomes, POs, PSOs, and COs. What are PSOs? Any idea? Program specific outcomes. For undergraduate courses, not much importance is given to this PSOs, but only for PG programs, PSOs are given more importance. Because in PSOs, uh, for our UG programs, you have three different subjects, three co uh, the combination of three. So which PSO you give, so they get confused. So that's why not much importance is given for PSOs as far as UG courses are concerned. Program specific outcomes. They are specific to the program, whereas the program outcomes are almost common to all the undergraduate courses. Let me emphasize again. I have forgotten to tell you that. Program outcomes in general are defined 
for all the UG programs. Only some changes are made depending upon the program that you are undergoing. That is the difference. Whereas program specific, it is specific to your program. BSc, MPCS will have different PSOs. MECS will have different. Become computers will have different PSOs. Whereas POs are not like that. They are more general. And then from their assessment criteria, results analysis and attainment of COs, then attainment of POs and uh, identify action and implement and realize the improvements. This is the jargon of this OBE, the whole process. Next slide, please. Now, one important aspect, everybody should understand this and most of you know about this, Bloom's taxonomy. Earlier only, Education people used to talk about Bloom's taxonomy, not the other faculty. Now, everywhere, wherever you go, you have to give utmost importance to Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy, this is the tool that can be used to incorporate critical thinking questions and activities into the classroom. It changes the entire pedagogy. The approach of a teacher, how we should be in a classroom also, this helps us, Bloom's taxonomy. How they should be assessed, it will help. How you have to formulate the syllabus, it helps. How the assessment should be there, Bloom's taxonomy helps. So Bloom's taxonomy plays a vital role in all the activities of teaching learning process, including framing of curriculum, etc. So there are six categories. Next, next one, please. So this is the revised Bloom's taxonomy, and uh, it starts with remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating. So most of you are familiar with this. I don't want to explain much further here. So these are two types of cognitive skills. So these things, uh, up, remember, understand, and applying, they are mostly associated with lower order thinking skills, whereas the top three are higher order thinking skills. And Bloom's taxonomy is incredibly flexible and can be used in conjunction with most teaching philosophies and teaching styles. So it can do many things. It is highly adaptable and versatile, making it well suited to a number of different tasks. Let us see what are the tasks the Bloom's taxonomy you can associate with. The first one is the curriculum and course planning. The second one, setting learning goals or objectives. Third one is creating learning activities, creating assessments and evaluation. As I told you, in handling all these three, all these four, your Bloom's taxonomy comes in handy. Next slide, please. <clears throat> this is the curriculum planning. So in while writing, okay, you have formulated the curriculum. The draft you have in physics, you should have one, two, three, four, so many courses in this. So in each course, you formulate the syllabus. So while formulating the syllabus, Always, I start with the lowest level of cognitive skill because they have to understand, isn't it, the subject. So I develop the syllabus based on the taxonomy level. I start with understanding level, slowly take it, it is apply in the next unit, then I create and etc. etc. So this is how the Bloom's taxonomy helps in formulating the syllabus. Next one. I will leave this with your IQSC coordinator. There is no problem. You listen to me, you need not note down. <laughs> it will be circulated to all of you. <laughs> there are no patent rights. You can use this. <laughs> so then setting learning goals are objectives. And Bloom's taxonomy also will help us in defining the POs because always it starts with an action verb. What a student is capable of. He can apply, or he can create, or he can understand. Like that, we start all the POs with an action verb because you should be measurable whether he has done the achieved that or not. We have to see. So, in defining the POs and also COs, and in doing both the things, Bloom's taxonomy will help us. These levels. Next one. <clears throat> and creating learning activities. This is very, very important in the classroom. For example, you, you have one CO, okay, you are teaching it. It is at the remembering level or understanding level you are teaching. Can you give examples of uh, evaluating or creating in the classroom? 
at that level you have to teach or confine your this one to the level of that particular co what you are teaching in the classroom so that way it is used <coughs> useful for finding out that and finally creating assessments even while creating the assessments that means you have to test you have to assess the students there also bloom's taxonomy comes in handy we will see how it comes in handy as far as the assessment and evaluation is concerned the next slide please these are the peos for bcom computers i have borrowed some from somebody these are the peos that they have written of course your college also have uh, done that what a student is capable of so i need not go through this these are the four peos they have done so they say wider scope for employment opportunities and graduates can pursue higher education and develop competencies and they will be able to start their own business enterprise so this is what students can do after completing a program in your college these are peos not outcomes again i am repeating it these are the objectives of this particular program next pos these are the general graduate attributes for any program undergraduate program these are valid all these are valid and they are recognized by many agencies including ugc also so these are the graduate attributes knowledge and expertise in discipline you require for any program you need that and critical thinking and problem solving it is necessary research and enquiry and the usage of modern tools and technology and social interaction communication skills soft skills behavioral skills teamwork and leadership ethical social and professional understanding environment and sustainability self directed and lifelong learning these are all the graduate attributes now these are in general they have given it you have to transform these graduate attributes to the pos corresponding to the particular program that you have next slide we will show you that pos for bcom computers this includes all the graduate attributes that i have already defined so here they acquire global competence po2 i am reading acquire global competencies through comprehensive curricular and co curricular programs with practical skills and also apprise the students to face modern day challenges in commerce and business so accordingly for the science program slightly change it so reorient the graduate attributes to pos depending upon the program that they are studying so this is how you have to do it in brackets what i have done is that is the bloom's taxonomy level at what level this po po is addressing so this is these are the pos so those 10 graduate ten graduate attributes have been converted into eight this pos of course these cover even the other things also what are left over they are clubbed two of them are clubbed into this and those 10 are made into eight pos so if you have any doubt at any stage please stop me PSO is different. PSO separately you have to write. PSO could be three, three, three to four maximum. That is domain specific. PSOs are domain specific. Whereas this is knowledge. It includes knowledge, skills, and attitudes. These are the three things that go into PSOs. PSOs are only domain specific. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. I, it, it is a bit difficult. I, I, when giving the assessment, I will tell you that. I will answer. So every subject you can do this. There is no problem. There is no problem. There is no problem. Only is what is create level in science may be different from create level in arts. Yes. So because the activities that you have to undertake for create and also the way you test is different from the way science people test. That difference I will highlight. Yes. No, that's what I told him. The Bloom's taxonomy level level you have those action verbs acquire apply apply develop function build develops now here this six bloom section me level because my emphasis i was asked to give more inputs in the assessments so that's why i'm running through like an express so, so these are each of this bloom section me level are associated with what are called as action verbs they are available you see that and in fact, in every faculty room, you should have the Bloom's taxonomy chart 
and also the action verbs associated with each of the Bloom's taxonomy level. It is a must because this is the Bible for us. Every day, if you look at that and it enters into your brain and it percolates down, you can never forget. So that's why Bloom's taxonomy chart along with each Bloom's taxonomy level, what are the action verbs we use? Even for assessment or for framing the course syllabus and everything you can do using those action verbs. So this is POS. Can I proceed? Yes, next. Yes. Hi. Hmm. Can we know if which student has gone to which particular level? Okay, time to you. I, 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 we can do that. I will tell you. Towards the end, I will tell you. I will address, answer your question. That means student wise attainment you want to find out. PO attainment. One person, one student. Yes. Right, right. I will I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> I will explain that towards the end. So next, so preparation of the course outcomes. There is no rigid rule that you should have only four or five or six, as I told you. There are no limitations. There are no instructions. You, could, you can have four, you can have five, you, you can have six. But it is better to have some uniformity in the college and have a fixed number of COs for all courses, all programs. So it could be four or six, uh, doesn't matter. And uh, the course outcome should guide instructional design. Please, I'll read it. This is very important. How to prepare course outcomes. This is very important for you. Remember that course outcome should guide instructional design. How you have to design your instruction in the classroom, in the pedagogy, your course outcome should help us. Assessment strategies and learning activities throughout the course. This is very, very essential while framing the course outcomes and uh, serve as a foundation for designing meaningful learning experiences. And of course, after preparing this, the teachers can sit together because one teacher might have taught that subject sometime back. And so exchange your ideas, prepare COs. That's what I told you in the beginning. This is the advantage of the teachers. So community activity, you will be interacting with each other. You'll be knowing what is happening in the department, all courses. So sit together, finalize, and get the approval of the HOD. This is how COs are to be prepared. Yes. No unit wise outcome, some people do it, but I personally feel that it should be course wise. Course wise. There is nothing wrong in writing unit, unit wise course outcome. You can do it. There is nothing wrong, but it is, it is better if you have overall picture what a student can do after undergoing this particular course because unit do not have a separate status whereas course has a separate status so once he completes the course what he is capable of because why i i can answer that because why some colleges are adopting this because it is easy in the assessment process because in the first internal, you test the first two units. In the second internal, the last two or three are units. So that's why you are saying CO1, CO2, CO3, CO4, CO5. That is the philosophy with which that is started. But actually, in the long run, it is better if you write for the entire course. Right. Next slide, please. Yeah, that's what this already told. Be specific and measurable. Whenever you are saying a course outcome, you must be able to measure it. People can, students can understand. Then how can you measure it? Understanding capacity. It will be difficult. So it should be specific what you are saying it. And align with program level outcomes. Ultimately, all these courses will help the students in acquiring the program outcomes. So whatever program outcomes are there, these courses must help them to acquire that. So that means there must be some alignment between the course outcomes that you are writing and the poor program outcomes that you expect from the student. So there should be an alignment in this. In tune with the program outcomes, you have to prepare the course outcomes. All courses will not address all program outcomes. Remember that. At the most, two or three program outcomes your course may address. But there may be some other course which can address the other POs which you are not addressing. So like that, don't be under the impression that you have to align or address all the program outcomes as a teacher of a particular course. 
it is not necessary it is not possible let me tell you but whatever you are writing co1 for 15 it must be able to map with at least one of the pos that is a must minimum one maximum it could be 3 or 5 doesn't matter but all pos cannot be addressed by a single course because so many courses are there so all put together they will address all the pos i hope it is clear align with program level outcomes consider the level of difficulty is it at a remember level understand level or apply analyzing and which level it is that you have to say in that and limit the number of outcomes seek input and review input and review means discuss with other faculty take the inputs and then review it next time so like that it should be dynamic it's not static once a co is written that means it, it need not be the final so always the scope for change based on the feedback you receive because in the indirect attainments we will be collecting the feedback also so based on that feedback always you have to change your outcomes for the next batch of students so that is what is needed use a consistent format revise and refine so this is what or how the course outcomes have to be prepared by a particular teacher next next slide please so, so i have taken some example principles of accounting these are the course outcomes framed by a particular teacher you can see acquire conceptual foundation and accounting concepts and conventions the second one you see apply apply is at level 3 acquire is under that is level 1 and then co 101.3 it is level 3 identify understand methods of depreciation distinguish two and the last one is f3 level 3 so like this it consists of various levels of bloom's taxonomy if it is possible you have to take them to the highest level through your course if it is not possible at least to the level 4 this is what is required by the yes in fact the ideal case would be not to have remember understand levels in course outcomes remember understand levels can be excluded from all the course outcomes if it is possible because without doing this they cannot apply they cannot analyze they cannot evaluate they cannot create so it goes without saying the first two levels in fact they should not figure in the examinations that is an ideal case i am talking so you should start with level 3 Even your questions, level three, you start it. Yes, you you can do that. Apply level straight away. You can go that. Absolutely, there is no problem. Yes, next next slide, please. Now comes as I told you, they must be aligned with the POs, right? You must be adapting this, isn't it? All of you are familiar with this mapping, CO PO mapping. How many are not familiar? Please raise your hands. I want to know how many are not familiar. Yes. CO PO mapping. What is the philosophy of this? Always I tell my teachers also in our college, you should not bother about how to do it. Why to do is important. Then only we will get the total insight into OBE. Some colleges follow some softwares. If you enter this, it will calculate PO, attainment, assessment, etc. right that will not help you in any way as a teacher we must do on our own so ultimately our aim is to train the student to acquire the program outcomes through various courses that we are offering in the program so these outcomes ultimately these pos must be there should be alignment between these two so that is called as mapping mapping of course outcomes with program outcomes next please so these are the cos for the course that i have mentioned and these are the pos take one co as a teacher and i want to know what method you are following for uh, this mapping let somebody explain me who is familiar with this how you are mapping
what process what procedure you are following that's what i'm asking yes no how do you know it is moderate or strong so it is it is by judgment it is by judgment you are following that of course there are various methods of following uh, correlating this and giving the mapping strength that itself it takes 2 to 3 hours to explain you the methodology that we have now i don't want to go into those details if uh, sometime some other time we can have it so now cos and pos take one co co 101.1 see as a teacher you can see whether that can be mapped with these things for example let us say co first co can it be mapped with the first PO here? First CO with first PO. Yes, it can be mapped. Can it be mapped with the PO8? No. So like that, first you see as a teacher, you can tell whether you can map it with which POs I can map. You identify that. That is the first thing you have to do after finalizing the COs and POs. The next slide. So this is hypothetical. There is no correlation. Just to explain, I have generated this table. So I am correlating CO, first CO with three of the POs, similarly the others. Just to impress upon, to say that each CO need not be mapped with all POs. That is the first principle you should remember. But it must map at least one PO at least one PO, otherwise there is no need of having that course in the curriculum. If you cannot map with any of the PO, what is the need for the students to read that course? There is no need. This, <coughs> so this is, I will tell you, I will tell you when I come to that. For one course, this is only for one course. So. So one, it is not mapping, PO5, it is not mapping. Doesn't matter, you don't bother about that. Don't bother about that. But whatever POs your course outcome is mapping, you mark it. Yes. Because all put together afterwards, as head of the department, they will look into that, whether all the POs are mapped or not. If they are not mapped, what is to be done? Yes. Yes, some courses are some topics in this. Course will come at uh, a later level after combining all these things. What she says is also correct. So, if there are any gaps to address, or if they are not able to address some of the POs, you offer add on program, certificate programs, and also encourage them to take up NPTEL program just to fill in these gaps. So, that is the need for having courses over and above the curriculum. Why you should have anybody ask? This is what you can tell. The next slide, please. No, I'll, 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 the next slide is that. Okay, next. Assigning weightage to the particular COPO mapping. <laughs> the weightage is to be given as one, two, three, right? And as she says, it is only through judgment, right? One way of doing that is, for example, I'm saying that CO1 is addressing PO1. Now, what I do is compare the Bloom's taxonomy levels of these two. CO1 also starts with Bloom's taxonomy by action verb. PO also starts with Bloom's taxonomy by action verb. Compare these two verbs. Are they at the same level? If CO is at a higher level, well and good. Then give it three. <laughs> if it is at lower level, if your CO is lower level than the PO level, give it two. If it is two, le two levels lower, give one. If the difference is more, give zero. <laughs> That is, that is one way. It is not the standard method. I don't want to pollute your brains by saying this. But this is one method. And another method is, what is the weightage you are giving in the classroom for CO1? It depends on that also. I will come to that. When, uh, when you are preparing the teacher plan or lesson plan, I will explain you that further. So this is how, whether it is moderate, strong or weak, 3, 2, 1. Next slide. So those tick marks are converted into the strength of mapping. 
right i hope all of you are following then take the average so in your course for example you are not able to address po5 and po8 doesn't bother uh, don't bother somebody else will take care of that so this is the strength of mapping of your course to the po's at what level it is addressing also you are saying it is address maximum is 3 the next one is 2 1.8 2.5 1 only don't bother but find out where you stand with respect to your course when you are mapping to the pos so average of this you take it in a similar way prepare the correlation matrices for all the courses this is called as correlation matrix one course i have shown you like this for all the courses you prepare a correlation matrix like this so that you will have the last row average for each course you tabulate separately next slide that shows that yes c101 102 103 etc up to all the courses whatever course including practical everything as i told you you write down these values the last row what you have written for the earlier paper is written here and then take the average of this what does it indicate the average the last row indicates target set for program outcomes that means all courses put together right these are the values you are getting or strength of mapping for pos do you agree with that or not the last row so that means you are addressing to that extent that means that is the target you can set can you expect more than this what you are addressing as a teacher as a, as a department no so what is the target fixed for a po it is given by the average of this particular the last row po1 the target set is 2.7 PO2 2.9, so that when you calculate the attainments, you compare that with this, whether you have attained or not. Because we could address only to this extent, we expect the students maximum to attain only this. Maybe some students may be there, which are more intelligent on their own, they can cross this. But the limit that we have set is this. So if it 1.3, are you happy with that? 1.3. when you expect 3 no so for improving that you have to offer some certificate programs add on courses or some other activities consider that as a course and add that here then take the average and try to bring all these values nearer to 3 that is a quality institution a quality institution is one which can address all pos to the extent of 80 to 90% for that curriculum over and above the curriculum you have to address because lifelong learning environmental protection there are so many things social interaction so because adoption of villages that will help that may not be there in your courses but add it up afterwards after computing this add all these activities and then bring this to the satisfactory level to the extent of 80% this is what is to be done next slide please next slide Yes. Hmm. 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 Right. 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 Oh yes, that also credits will be there. Credits will be there in assessment and attainment. You take that also into consideration. Yes. no the ma no if it is a, you, you are the best college if you are a plus grade everything should be 3 <laughs> if it is a b college it should be 2 2.5 if it is a c grade college it could be less than 2 there is no limit <laughs> it it depends on you <laughs> and your activities your curriculum so if it is low means you are not doing justice to the program so revise your curriculum and see that you gear up to this that is the philosophy of this yes hmm. doesn't matter he is learning on his own <laughs> he, he can be able to do better we we have some students who are more intelligent than us in the classroom do you agree with that or not same is true here it could be more 
yeah that, that is there but overall you can see overall but how many students are uh, uh, yes if all the students are above this revise the target yes, yes next so assessment of learning outcomes so this is so far what we have done i will just revise in 2 minutes we have consider what are the different outcomes why you should study obe what are the different outcomes how to write course outcomes program outcomes correlate and arrive at set targets for your pos this is what we have done now assessment of learning outcomes how to assess the learning outcomes so this is the next uh, i don't know what's the time 11:15 11:30 please remind me i will break whenever you say stop i will stop <laughs> so assessment of learning outcomes this is slide number 37 so i have 85 slides <laughs> but some of them i can quickly run through no problem but as i told you my job is not to complete the syllabus in the classroom i want you to learn even if i complete 40 slides that is enough that's what i say even my teachers as director don't bother about the completing the syllabus some teachers can complete the syllabus if it is a uh, 14 16 weeks in 12 weeks they will complete some teachers cannot complete even after 16 weeks so it is not that is important that whistling the same thing you are teaching but whether they are learning or not that is important make them learn that is what is important that is the order of the day today our days have gone when we were telling i used to take class for 3 hours continuously in msc people used to listen patiently but now after 15 minutes they became restless in the class you might have observed yes yes also the way of teaching huh? first from the absorption capacity in the class oh yes oh yes i set standards of six classes right but uh, one class is very good i finish off very fast true one class is very dull I may complete. I may take 75 classes. Question: I am not doing. So the collect, se, completion of syllabus is a function of two. One is the students, and the other one is the teacher. And the third one is content. These are the three which control. Yes. So assessment. Now there are assessments at two levels. The teacher is directly involved in the first assessment process. That is course assessment. You are assessing your students. at the course level that is the first one based on your assessment the program outcomes are assessed by some procedure so you are directly involved course level assessment if the course level at assessment goes wrong then po assessment also goes wrong so you must be very careful to have objective assessment at the course level then only obe will be meaningful both to the teachers and as well as students i cannot boost up marks just like that because i should get a better value of co attainment that will spoil the entire environment of obe so please be careful about this the assessment at the course level is very very important crucial for determining the po attainment ultimately we are interested in po attainment that can happen only if he attains the co outcomes course outcomes through course outcomes we are finding out the attainments of po this is the indirect way of measuring the outcomes but in fact now new examination reforms are coming into picture both aicte and ugc they are saying that these questions must be directly aligned to your pos questions are to be aligned with covos pos then whatever you are doing assessing you are directly assessing po instead of the indirect method but now people have not understood the direct method yet so that's why i don't want to complicate and talk about the direct method of assessing so because po is po what are the competencies that students require in order to achieve a po they have defined it for po 1 what are the competencies these are called as the competencies you should the student should possess to acquire that po and how he can perform under these competencies these are called as performance indicators so based on the performance indicators you set the question paper they must be aligned with the performance indicators 
in various competencies so that you can compute PO's attainment directly from the questions, question paper that you are setting. That is the next level. We are not interested to go that. Okay, this is program level assessment. Next. By looking at the question paper, for example, I come for inspection. I would like to see the question papers. By looking at the question paper, I can talk about the quality of the institution. The quality of the institution depends upon the quality of the question paper, not the answers they write. The quality, because the quality of question paper defines or is related to the quality of teaching in the classroom. For example, the higher order skills, apply, analyze, evaluate, create. If you find in examination questions without addressing that in the classroom, can you ask questions like that? The students will bombard on you. They say it is out of the syllabus. It is not taught in the classroom. So that's why what the tendency of the teacher is to confine, to remember and understand and apply at the most in order to avoid such problems from the students. But that is not correct. So that's why I told if a question paper contains only remember, understand and apply, it is not a quality institution. The quality of teaching is not good. Definitely one can say. So that's why good learning starts with questions, not answers. So this you must keep in mind. So the quality of the education system, entire education system, it depends upon the way you ask the questions in the examination. Whatever you say, the students are tuned to prepare for the examinations ultimately. Then what type of questions come? They take the last three years or four years question paper and prepare accordingly. So if the question papers are only at the lower order thinking skills, they will prepare only at that level. Whereas it is at a higher order thinking skills, they pre start preparing and they will ask these teachers also why these things are not being covered in the class. So it is a challenge to both the students and as well as the faculty in the classroom to have a quality question paper. So in the assessment, one should remember this because you is the A grade college. I want to see a quality question paper in this particular college. Okay, it is uh, truly said that the assessment is an engine that drives the students learning. Naturally, the assessment process, students always look at that, how I am assessed in the examination, how I score better marks, that is the thinking. Yes, next slide, please. I'll, 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 I'll discuss that, I'll discuss that. <laughs> I know you have so many questions. <laughs> yes. So one teacher is addressing the students, he's saying class all year long, I have taught each of you to learn at your own pace, in your own personal style. Okay, teacher is saying this to this to class. The next one, I have set goals for each one of you individually to help you reach your own unique potential. And now the results of that will be measured. Right, this is what he said afterwards, the last one you see, with a standardized test. <laughs> so in what way it helps the students with a standardized test? write an essay on so and so, right? Write what you know about superconductivity. Some question papers I find, what do you know about superconductivity? So such type of questions, it will not help the cause of the institution or quality of education. So this is with a standardized test. He has adopted so many <laughs> methodologies, individualized everything he has made provision, but he is not testing like that. So his test is associated with the standardized test. That is, yes, next slide, please. So this is very important for you, all the teachers. What's your time, madam? Shall I stop? Okay. <laughs> so this I call it as, it may be call it as a lesson plan or teaching diary, whatever you call it. So these are the components that go into that. Generally, what we write is, uh, earlier I know uh, academic art itself used to supply the teaching diaries and you used to write there in that. Day, what topic is done, what is the time of uh, class, everything. Now the trend has changed. Now you should, because, and sometimes what they do, the teachers 
at the end of the class they used to write in the attendance register the last page uh, today's date they will put it class time and what topic is taught that is called as teaching diary but this teaching diary or lesson plan is different from that in outcome based education so that is what is expected of in outcome based education so your principal or heads of the departments you must insist that teachers maintain this this will help you in many ways to become a quality institution i always believe that the teachers contribute to the quality not the infrastructure or not the administration it is only the teachers who contribute to the quality of the institution so this is what we expect topic what topic you are teaching which course outcome it is addressing for example i teach one topic today what is the course outcome everything should be related to whatever you are talking in the class whatever you are teaching in the class it should be related to one of the course outcomes whether it should be co1 co2 co3 co4 anything right there what co and then pedagogy or learning activities what activity is it chalk and talk or powerpoint presentation or demonstration group discussion seminars what is the activity that activity you have to mention for every class because from teacher centric we have been habituated to teacher centric methodology that means we teach you listen right but it should be student centric learning so unless as i told you after 15 minutes the students become restless in the class they will start murmuring if you allow mobile phones into the classroom the last bench fellow will uh, type some sms to the person sitting in the first bench shall we go to a matinee or shall we have lunch or dinner so these are the activities we regularly see so this is pedagogy learning activity what learning activity that's why wherever i go i say i allow them to get the mobiles into the classroom and give activities and use them mobile phones there are some quizzes you can immediately i am teaching some topic i'll i'll put one how to map co2 po i will ask a quiz question there are various tools that are available and using <coughs> using that tool you can type the answer and the teacher can know what are the answers already that are given by the teacher so you are guided by that the majority of them have understood it is all right if it is wrong you can again teach that that is how we can do it there are various tools available for conducting quiz online quiz immediately using their mobiles at no cost yes whatever it is so what i say is after 10 15 minutes you stop for some time and give them one or two questions assess them then and there what is taught during this 15 20 minutes whether they have understood or not by knowing the answers because they will be listed so by knowing the answers we know that i am not doing justice they are not following when they are not following there is no point in continuing the topic it is just to cover the syllabus no that is not my aim so revisit and help it that is what you can do so pedagogy what pedagogy or learning activity you are adopting that is to be written for each class nak also ask you have to under criteria 2 various techniques pedagogical approaches student uh, student centric learning activity methods they will come here automatically they will come here and then po number 2 which co is mapped so that what happens is this will be registered in your mind this mapping also which po the co is addressing that also register right there it is not difficult and taxonomy level at what level your topic is covered on that day is it remember understand or create or analyze evaluate that level also you write there and also what assessment assessment method can be used for this you write there is it internal test or some quizzes or assignments or some other way of testing it group discussions or you ask them to come at presentation seminars what are the activities you are involving as assessment methods that also we list there so this if you can do that try to habituate to complete this then it will be useful to you 
in improving the quality of the institution. So this I call as teaching diary. What the student, uh, teacher is doing in the classroom every day, you have to highlight it. Even for the outside world, it will be very easy for to test what you are doing. Even the accreditation agencies will appreciate this type of methodology. Yes, yes, one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> right there. Right there, sudden test. That's what I'm telling. Quiz. No, not written test. Quiz. <laughs> because immediately you can know if it is a test, you have to evaluate. It's a big time. We are, we are spending so much time on that. It is not possible. Our tendency is to give tests and not to evaluate and pass on that. What are the results? We do conduct because it is there. We have to write. And we have nothing to lose. But they have nothing to gain by writing that. Unless it is assessed and given back that feedback, it is not useful, isn't it? So this is right. Oh, yes. <laughs> there are many ways of doing this if you follow this. Yes. Next slide, please. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely you can write it. If it is uh, if it is aligned to more than one, write CO1 and CO2 also. If it is more than PO, PO1, PO2 also, you can write it. It is possible. Yes, next slide, please. Are we breaking? Okay. I don't mind continuing. <laughs> right. Yes. We are talking so much of broomsticks, Anime. I thought I would expose you. For different levels of broomsticks, Anime, what are the activities you can engage the students in the classroom? So as a teacher, you would like to know. So this is a brief I am giving you. The first level is remembering. At remembering level, when you are teaching, then what the students can do, what are the activities? These are the activities. I don't want to read it because I have a lot of other things to talk. <laughs> so lecture and note taking, reading and summarizing. And earlier when I was uh, a student, I completed my MSc in 1972, right? So I'm happy to announce this is my 50th year of service. I joined in 1973, Usmania University. This is my 50th year of service. Yes. So during that time, even textbooks were not available for us as students. Only teacher is God in the classroom. So that's why we used to pay attention to the teacher. And some people, they used to give the notes. We used to borrow the notes. Now what is the tendency if we give the notes? They will Xerox it. 1972, no Xeroxing facilities. Take home and write. Keep for one day or two days and return it back. And then this notes will be shared by all other students by writing and nothing else. Similarly, textbooks are not available. Who is to borrow the textbook from the teacher? Because he is following some book. That book is not available in the library. So what is to be done? Borrow that book. Again, write the contents and give that book back. Those were the days when I remember and recall back. What a fast difference between those days and these days. In 50 years time. You can see no Xeroxing facilities. We were not having calculators. Electronic calculators we were not having during those days. And when we came to MSc, we used to have mechanical calculators like type machines. We used to press the numbers. And then one number you press it. And if you want to add, rotate, there will be a lever in one direction, subtraction in another direction. You will be laughing at it, but you see. So that's always I say my students also we are lucky because we are traveling with the technology. Yes, that also we know this also we know. These people current generation these are called netizens. They don't know what were the days earlier. How better they are placed now in the education field. They don't understand. They take it for granted for granted. So if you understand this difference then definitely you can do wonders. So I am traveling with this. So I want to learn. Yes, is not a bar. 
So you have to learn continuously. You have to update your skills. Otherwise, there is no way you can serve the society. So this is remembering lectures, note taking, reading, summarizing, memorization exercise, quizzes and tests, worksheets and practice exercises. These are all the activities you can involve them, engage them in the classroom itself at the Bloom's Taxonomy level one. Next. So this is second level. Engage in group discussions, create analogies to relate complex ideas to everyday experiences, develop and answer questions, teach the material to someone else. So you ask one student to take a class <laughs> for five minutes or 10 minutes. What you have told in the last class, you call one student and ask him to revise what you have done it. So he, that's how you promote the activity of understanding. Unless he understands, he cannot do the job. So you must think about these things. You must come out of the conventional method of teaching and start adopting what is demanded by OBE. OBE demands that. So that's how you can promote or improve the quality. Next, next one. Yes, learning activities for Bloom's taxonomy level three applying case studies and analysis, simulations, experiments, hands-on activity, problem solving exercises, design project, and collaborative projects, etc. So when I was working in Nizam College in the year 1983, I was teaching Faraday effect and Lenz law of induction. Physics teachers can understand. So I have taken one model to the classroom where you have a coil and a galvanometer and a magnet. This coil is connected to the galvanometer and I have taken the magnet. And when you introduce this, there will be a deflection in the galvanometer. When I remove it, it will be in the opposite direction. If I keep it stationary, no deflection. With this simple experiment, I have demonstrated and explained so many complicated principles. Loss of induction, electromagnetic induction, how it moves from one direction to the other direction. All these things can be explained. That is at Bloom's taxonomy level application. So like that, you have to design some experiments and show it science people. And the others discuss some case studies. And everywhere, for anything there is provision, even for English teachers, you can do some activities. Role plays you can do at higher order levels. So like that, you have to promote this particular this thing. The level four, we'll complete this and stop. Yes. Analyzing. Analyze data, visual data analysis, compare and contrast, break down concept, complicate, uh, complex concepts, evaluate arguments, engage students in debates, critical review, piece of work. For example, this is analyzing. For example, you have seen one movie, RRR movie. You come to the class, ask them to analyze. Did you like it? Why you did like? Why you have liked it? Or why you have not liked it? A teacher can ask. That is how he can analyze. Or you are promoting his mind to analyze things. It need not be physics. It need not be chemistry. Anything analysis. You give a current topic and ask them to analyze. That is how you can promote this particular Bloom's taxonomy level among the students. Five, yes. assign projects or presentations, debates and discussions, engage students in peer reviews. Ah, but because students will be submitting assignments, you give this to the next student, ask him to review and give marks. So this is one way of promoting that, evaluating. How you evaluate others? That is one activity. Justify or defend a position, evaluation of research studies, reflect on personal experiences, present students with ethical dilemmas. So next one, because I leave it to you. I don't want to explain further. Yes, creating. Developing their own experiments. So you should design at least, ask the students to have one open-end experiment. You don't give him procedure. You give him whatever equipment he needs. Open-end experiment he has to design. That is the creation level. That even if two or three students can raise to that occasion, it turns out wonders. That is what is required at the creation level. And research proposals, ask him to write a research proposal on a particular topic. And artistic expressions, especially for language students, multimedia presentations, innovative problem solving, curriculum design, digital storytelling, invention or prototype development. And these activities that I have mentioned, some of them are useful to some faculties. The others are useful for other faculties. Not all are suited for all subjects. So that's why identify 
what are the things that suit you a different bloom's taxonomy level so that you can address in the class at that level then only you are justified in assessing the student at that level unless you address you cannot assess unless you assess at the higher levels the quality of the question paper will not improve if the quality of the question paper is bad the quality of the institution will not improve so this is what is required i think we will stop here break for 10 minutes With the permission of the chair, we are breaking for 10 minutes and I expect each one of us to join exactly by 1150. Thank you so much.